it's Lizzie all from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. Today's project is one that I made for a team event where we had swaps and the swaps were divided up so that you didn't have to make all the same project for everyone. We had smaller groups and the idea was that we made slightly more elaborate swaps uh, but because they were for a smaller group that that was fine. So I chose one of my swaps and you'll probably see the other one. Um, one of my swaps was to use a bundle. Now I chose the Best Bunny bundle, which is in the annual catalogue. It's on page 36 and this is the cute little project that I made. But it's a fairly well hidden bundle, which is part of the reason I chose it, um, because the bundle is down here. So in this, I guess it's pineapple punch box down here, it's got the best bunny bundle or bundle best bunny and it's the stamp set and the bunny builder punch. The bunny builder punch is shown tiny here because they then refer to it on page 212. But it is a bundle. So if you use this code here rather than the separate stamp and punch codes, you must use this code. You save 10%, so it's £28.75 for the bundle. The stamp set on its own is up here um, and is £15, and as you can see from the N, it was new in the current annual catalogue, which runs through until, I want to say, the 3rd of June. Let me check that for you. I'm sure it's the 3rd of June. It'll be on the back. If I can get to the back cover. Come on, back cover. Thank you. Yep, 3rd of June. So it finishes on the 3rd of June. I love this set because it's actually not an Easter set, even though it's a bunny. Obviously, it could be used for Easter and you can pull in one of the Easter sentiments from uh, one of the other stamp sets. But you've got hopping by just to say hi, happy birthday, not hoppy birthday, but happy birthday, which is always useful. So you can use that for other projects. Surprise, welcome little one. And then we've got, as well as the sentiments, grass, a hop. Oh, you made my day. Um, stars, a little hat, which I think would probably fit quite nicely on our baby bunny. It would definitely fit on our adult bunny. Um, hands, hat, parcel, tail, head, body. Three choices of expression. I've chosen the winky one, uh, but there's a standard... Um, a real grinny with teeth, um, then there's a bow that you can pop on, a carrot, the baby bunny and some sprinkles. So really cute, really, really cute. So as I say, this is the project that I have made for the team event and this is on a little um, spring, which I will tell you where I got that from in a moment. So we've got a watercolored background. I've used blender pens on all of the stamped images surprise hopping by just to say hi on the inside and then this uh, is the mini ruffle ribbon so let's get started and I'm going to do this in a slightly odd order because I'm going to do my watercolor background first um, and there is a vague logic to that so let's pop all this to one side um, and the vague logic to that is that it needs to dry although I may do a blue peter moment so shimmer white cardstock I've got a, um, one of my blocks, this is an eye block, and then these are colours, um, obviously they're colours. So I've used Lemon Lime Twist and Balmy Blue. You can use the ink pad to do this rather than the refills, um, but because I'm doing mass production, I've used the refills. If you want to do uh, use your ink pad, then just squeeze the back so that you get ink onto the inside of your lid and then just pick it up from there. But I've got six to make. So um, for me, it's easier to use the reinker. And actually, let's just give them a shake. It's always worth giving them a shake. I don't think they need it, but it's kind of habitual. Um, and then just one tiny drop of each of the reinkers onto our block. And then I've got a an old cloth here. Um, it's an old face cloth, actually, but it's just a cotton cloth. 
Uh, you could use obviously just a piece of kitchen paper, but that's just to make sure that you've got control of your water. I've got two of the larger aqua painters. You get them in a set with a smaller nib. Um, let me grab a smaller nib to show you. So, um, smaller on my on the right, larger on the left. Uh, but because I've got more than one set, I'm using two large. But otherwise, you could just use the one large and just make sure it's clean in between. I always like with my blender pen. I always make sure they're clean before I start. Get some water flowing just by squeezing the barrel. Just water in here. You can fill them with alcohol, you know, rubbing alcohol. Whoops. And then just on your shimmer white cardstock. Now you could use watercolor paper if you would rather, but the shimmer white I actually prefer for this. Um, but just add water. You will find whether you use the watercolor or the shimmer white that to begin with, the water will actually sink into the paper. So you do need to, need to use probably more than you think and just rub it across. You don't want it to cover the whole of the area, just you know the ins just inside because it there is a bit of a if I bring in the original it's got a frame of just the white around it so you don't need to go all the way to the edge so it's not quite as mucky as it would otherwise be then pick up some of your color and just start moving that around now depending on how much water you've got on your paper that will move of its own accord as well but uh, you can help it on its way. And then just clean that off a bit. And as I say, this is where you could just use the same one, but hey, let's use two because I've got two. And then, and that really shows how the colour wicks, um, but just move it about. And we're just looking for sky and grass. So it's really, you know, as straightforward as that. Now the shimmer white and the watercolour actually dry best if you can leave them to dry naturally. Those of you who have followed me for any length of time probably know that I have underfloor heating in my craft room so I find that that's a great help but just leaving them to dry will be great. Once they're no longer shiny you can put a heavy weight on them I find an F block very useful for that, um, but I wouldn't do that until they were damp rather than wet. This, I hope you can see, is actually wet. But I'm going to pop that on the floor, and here's one I prepared earlier. Now it is not completely flat, but it's you know it's close. It'll be fine. Um, let's just tidy these away. So we'll be using that one instead. I don't actually need it just yet. So as far as the stamping is concerned, I've used my Stamparatus because I have stamped or rather punched using the Bunny Builder punch itself. I've just stamped a template and then with my Stamparatus using the foam mat because we're using photopolymer. So you need the foam mat to build up the layer. Just pop your um, your um, template on and then just feed the shape of, feed your stamps into the shape. So attach that, feed your stamps in and they will all fit at the same time. And I've added the carrot because I'm doing mass production um, as much as anything. This is a great idea. Then a piece of Whisper White card. Just make sure that that is big enough. Yes, it is. And I'm using crumb cake. We always say when you're using blends, which is what I've used for the colouring, use memento. Whoops. But basically what we mean is use anything that is uh, water based rather than alcohol based. The Stazon is alcohol based uh, and is great if you're water colouring or using stamping right markers. It's fine for that. Uh, but if you're using... Um, if you're using blends, you cannot use stays on, but you can use classic ink. So I've got a stamping spot that I have inked with crumb cake. I know it's crumb cake because I've written on it. And then 
I just find that for the stamparatus, using the stamping spots means I'm more likely to get the ink on the stamp rather than on the stamparatus plate. Um, but, gosh, I'm umming a lot today. But you could use the full size pad. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I have the stamping spots. So, and I just get the uninked ones because that's all we have in the catalogue. And then just stamp that. Oops, and because it's the Stamparatus, I can go back and get it properly stamped. So, simple as, that's all I'm going to do with that for the moment. So, we need to give our bunny a face, and for that I am going to use the Memento. So, just inking up the winky face, and because it's a photopolymer stamp, we can, easier when there's no camera, just stamp that onto our face. Simple as that. So you do need to make sure, even though you're using um, Memento, which is the recommended ink for using with blends, you do need to make sure that it is properly, properly dry, because otherwise it will smudge a bit. So as far as colouring is concerned, because I'm using quite a few of the images. I have got a few blends. So I used the black and the smoky slate dark on the hat, as well as the pumpkin pie for the ribbon. And I've got this, I don't know, can you see? I've got this sort of reflection on it. That's a deliberate ploy, as if the light is coming from here, because top hats do have that shine. And I'm imagining a satin ribbon. And then I've used the same pumpkin pie on the carrot. And then I've actually used uh, Granny Apple Green on the carrot uh, because it is that nice bright green and it goes quite nicely with the lemon lime twist, particularly as I've used the light predominantly. But let me show you very quickly how I do some of the colouring. I'm not going to show you how I do all of it, um, but I will, I mean, I'll explain how I do all of it. So, actually, let's zoom in first. Sorry if this makes you a bit sick. But I have had a very useful comment that sometimes I don't show you things close up enough. So the hat, I've started, as I say, by deciding that's where my light source is. So for that, I used the dark smoky slate and the two black, so the black combo. So I started, I'll show you on, that's the black, I don't want that. I'll show you on the spare bit here. So I started just by adding some of the smoky slate. Then I added some of the dark, the light black. I do find it slightly odd that there's a light black and a dark black. So I added some of the, dark, the light black on both sides. And you want to come in reasonably close, but you do not want a hard line. And then the black, the dark black, goes on top of that. And again, you do not want a hard line. You want to come reasonably close uh, to the edge. Then again, go back over with the light black to blend that in. And then come in with your dark smoky slate and blend over that gap. Now I have done this a little wider than I did on the hat. And then just leave it kind of to sit for a while. And when we finished, I'll come back and show you what that looks like because it all blends together. So it's one of those things that looks a bit ugly to begin with, but does blend together. And then I did basically the same thing with the pumpkin pie and the ribbon, but only in two colors. So I just used the light and the dark. So I started by laying down the dark, uh, the light, then put the dark on top and then went over this area again in the light. But for the bunny itself, I have used, oops, 
I should say the carrot I did in the same way as the ribbon for the hat. Now let's just bring that in. So, uh, okay, so we've got the ivory, which, are we in the camera? That's the problem with being quite so large, yes. So the ivory for the inside of the ears, and I've done exactly the same for the baby bunny. Um, and then I've also used the ivory for his belly. So I have gone all the way around, but I'll just do one side so you can see it. And then for the belly, I come in with my colour lifter and just soften that edge. And that will, when it's, you know, it, it, it takes time to work, that will then fade. And you'll see that happening as we go through. In fact, it's already happening. So the ears... I'll finish off with dark crumb cake. Just draw around the outside. Simple as that. Uh, the hands, I've just done a sort of scribble of dark crumb cake and come in with the light crumb cake to blend that out. And that's just so there's a bit of shadow. Actually, when we finish this, you won't be able to see much of the hands. So don't worry too much. Uh, I'll leave the top off that because I will be needing it again. And off that. Right, for his face, hopefully the memento is dry now. So for his face, I've got the ivory again and I've just drawn a circle. I say drawn, splodged a circle in the middle. Then with the light crumb cake, I filled in the whole of his face that isn't ivory so just and obviously we do the other ear as well but this is for speed so just everything that you haven't already got as ivory colour in with the light crumb cake then the dark crumb cake goes on top of that and we're basically ending up with a heart shape round his eyes that then comes down to his chin. Gone slightly over the edge there. I wouldn't normally colour in quite the uh, quite this angle, but because of the camera. I am. And then come back in with your light crumb cake and just smush over his eyes and that will then blend back and then just come in a little bit under his chin. Now the body I just did, the rest of the body I just did in dark crumb cake, no shading, no colouring, but you can see that the, the outside of his belly has now got a nice shaded area. This has now become less of an obvious line. As I say, it is a thicker line that I've left in the middle than I did on his hat, but that's so that you can actually see what I did. Um, but as I say, hopefully, if I bring his body in as well, you can see that that's faded, that's all faded, that's faded, so it's all worked fine. So let's come out again. Sorry. Oops, that's in. Let's come out again. Okay, so get rid of those. Open up my box and put those in there to keep body and soul together. Right, okay, so punch. This is just to prove that it punches out and then I will go into some fussy cutting for you because we do need to fussy cut some of the pieces. Get that lined up and punch. And you can see that we've got the bits left. Now I do actually need ones that are fully coloured in. Always a plan, Liz, always a plan. So here are some I've made earlier. And if I come in with those as, as I... See, there are moments when I think I'm just not meant to do a video for a particular project. This was actually... Well, this is the third time. Um, there were... 
I did actually record the whole thing without setting my camera the first time, but there we go. Fortunately, I think we're about where um, where we stopped, so I will be splicing this together. So we were about to punch out our bunny. So let's have a go. So we line our bunny up in our punch, and because we used a template, it's going to fit. So there we go. Perfect. Hopefully the rest of this video will go according to plan. Now, carrot. I do need a carrot. So we've got all our bunny and his tail, the hat. We've got a baby. The hat, obviously, I fussy cut. The baby bunny, I fussy cut. But the carrot, I'm going to use to show you how I fussy cut. Now, where there is a rounded piece, I would never go in straight. Um, so there's a nice straight line here. I wouldn't go straight up there because it's going to end up with a point. We may end up with a point anyway. But I would... Uh, it's coming a bit. I would... Again, this is not an angle that I would normally do it at. I would come in and then do our turn so that there is some hope that we won't end up with a nasty sharp point at the end of the carrot where I want a nice rounded end to my carrot. Now you will see that I am moving my carrot, not my scissors. All I'm doing with my scissors is opening and closing them. I'm moving my carrot where I want my scissors to cut. Now, I, as I say, this is not, I would normally do it slightly further away from my eyes because that's better for my vision. But am I in camera? Yes, I am. But I do want you to have some idea of what I'm doing. So, can you see that? Hopefully you can. And again, I would normally be holding it at the top, but so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing it slightly more cack handed. Now, because everything else is punched, I say everything else, the main rabbit is punched, I am leaving a white edge. There you see, we've not got a sharp point to our carrot because we came in and we started here at an angle. Um, so, yes. Right, okay, so we have a bit of a. Oh, we've got to make a background so there, this is the piece that I've already used so I need some tear and tape I need a stamp and I need a piece of cardstock so here's my card that I have cut the short fat way well I've cut in half long ways rather than I've cut in half this way scored down the middle now I'm going to just make sure see I don't always score exactly in the middle right so the front is slightly larger than the back, which is how it should be. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my memento and stamp the inside first, having established that if you've got one side that is larger than the other, put the large side on the front. Hopping by just to just say hi. I won't worry about the split infinitive there. Then I need a surprise on my background. So again, just with memento, we are going to, at a bit of a jaunty angle, put a surprise. Don't need those again. Don't need that again. Right, okay. Tear and tape. I want two small pieces of tear and tape for adhering of the ribbon. Um, I'm using the Mini Ruffle Lemon Lime Twist. This is where your grid paper is great. So I'm lining my the bottom, because this is the bottom, of my uh, piece of card against that line. And I'm coming up four squares because I'm on the inch side. Uh, ooh, apparently I'm coming up more than four squares. There we go. And on the fifth square, I'm popping this. So basically I'm going to have my ribbon so that it's running at the one inch mark. And I'm going to actually press that down quite well because it makes it easier to peel the backing off if the tape is properly stuck to the card. 
otherwise you have a tendency to pull the card, the tape off the card when you peel the backing off. Stick one of your piece, one end of your ribbon over one piece, flip it over, and we can now use this line going up and down, and making sure that you can see, can you see, Ooh, come down a bit, making sure you can see where the ribbon is in relation to the squares at the top, be at the same position at the bottom, Pull it reasonably tight. I mean, you don't want it tight, 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 but you want it reasonably tight. And just snip that. Then grab a piece of balmy blue cardstock. Don't worry about measurements. They are over on my blog, which is linked in the description bar below. Grab some Tombow adhesive. You could use tear and tape, but you probably need quite a lot. I would not recommend snail for this. And the reason I'm saying that is, and I'm using quite a lot of the Tombow, the um, Shimmer White is flatter than it started, but is not flat. So we want to help it flatten out. So you need quite a lot of Tombow so that all of, or as much as possible, of the um, card sticks down. Then just pop that onto your card. So I've got a bit of fluff there. And then I will be coming back to the fact it's not actually sticking properly just yet. Um, I'm going to then stick it to my card base, which has got my hopping by on it. You don't have to do the hopping by at this point. You can do that later if you want and this I'm just going to add my usual amount of adhesive to you know I'm not going mad pop that on your card base and then grab something heavy in my case I have already prepared one I've used my F block oh and I didn't stamp pop that on top pop a punch on top, make sure you've got it all on a hard surface because what the idea is that you're squishing it flat and as you can see this one is lovely and flat. So I didn't stamp my surprise on that so we better stamp surprise. Don't you love that I've planned all this? Not surprise! I didn't plan it. Okay, we are nearly there. We're on the final, final bit. Oh, and I didn't do the hopping by either. So let's do that, otherwise I'll forget. Uh, make sure it's the right way up. Hopping by to just say hi. Should be hopping by just to say hi, but never mind. It's only for a bit of fun. Right, okay, so I am going to leave it flat at this point. Let's construct our bits. The hat's going that way up, and the first thing I'm going to do is attach my baby bunny. So baby bunny is going at a slight angle. So, slight angle. So that's baby bunny. Bunny bunny, we need our head. So just a bit of liquid adhesive there. Grab your head and pop that on. Oops, preferably without sticking your finger to it. Then the hands, you can ha have either with the hands at the top or the hands at the bottom. Um, and I will show you what I mean by that in a moment. So little dabs of adhesive. So I am putting my hands at the bottom but you could have your hand at the top. If you're having, you could have them one each. If you're having them one each, you would need two of the same hand. So you could have one with the hand at the top and one with the hand at the bottom. And I've used my take a pick for those because it's just such a great tool. Uh, right, for the carrot, just a little bit of adhesive across the back and then 
I do find this is slightly easier to do by hand than with the take pick. So pop that onto our bunny and then bring in the tail and I've just got the tail so that it's sticking out to the side a little bit. So just like that. So that's our bunnies built because it's a bunny builder. Sorry, that's really sad. OK, you do not need both sides of sizes of dimensional, but I have both, so I'm using both. So I've got a little one or just a piece for his head. And then two standard sized ones. And you want them quite well spread out because you want them to straddle your ribbon. Because the ribbon is quite um, bulky. It's, I mean, it's not, but it's because it's ruffled, it kind of is. So you want this gap and you're going to pop the pop this so that it straddles the ribbon in that gap. And as I say, you could use mini dimensionals for everything um, or you could use off cuts of large dimensionals. Whoops. Um, but I have both, so I'm using both. So that's the surprise. Now for the bouncy rabbit, I have got one of these things. These are, they're made by Hampton Art. I think there are other manufacturers as well. They're called Action Wobbles and I've got the mini Action Spring. Um, you get 12 in a packet, peel stick, wobble, and they're on Amazon. Um, I got them some time ago. I got them for Christmas. I was using Spirited Snowmen. There is a right way up and a wrong way up. You will find that you've got um, a piece that's got an outline white piece, and you've got a piece that's got solid. So if I bring that up a bit more. So there's this that is just the outline, and this that is solid. The solid bit actually is see-through, so you want the this piece first and this fits nicely on the back of your bunny it fits just in the body of your bunny as if it was made for it so if i show you that can you see that that fits just nicely in the body um so make sure that is properly stuck then whoops it's bouncing already uh, this is actually split uh, intentionally, I should say. So you can peel off one half, peel off the other half, and see that bit see through. So then you can pop your bunny down, go a bit across, I think, press him down, and actually, that is probably the same depth when it's flat as a dimensional, so it may even get through standard postage. You may need to put a piece of card over the top to stop him bouncing up, but should get through standard postage. And then I have added just a knot. So I've just taken my reel of ribbon, still attached to the reel, rather than cutting a piece and finding it's far too long or not long enough. And then just tie in a half knot, so just one, one tie and then pull that tight. The knot is probably going to be more of a problem with the postage than um, the rabbit. So I'll just trim those. And there it is. So if you are posting it and you have a problem with the knot, leave the knot off and just fold that tent on the back side. And there is our springy little bunny and here are some more springy little bunnies because I've got to make six so four down two to go I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up if you don't already subscribe then there is a subscribe button possibly still there in the bottom right hand corner otherwise there'll be links to my website and other videos um, 
the thumbs up is below all the uh, the dimensions and that sort of good stuff like what i've used are in the associated blog post which is below if you go over to my website you will also find you can subscribe to my newsletter subscribe to my blog posts and if you want a catalog if you go to the catalogs page you will find information of how to there's a form at the bottom where you just fill that in and i will get a catalog out to you if you're in the uk i only send catalogs out to the uk uh, mostly because i only sell in the uk however if bearing in mind it is still celebration and we've got the wonderful joining offer i do have team in europe so if you are in france the netherlands Austria or Germany as well as obviously the UK and you would like to join my team that would be fantastic uh, all the details about how to do that are on my blog um, in the blog post that is linked below there's also information about joining up so there's a frequently asked questions there's a, a whole section on joining my team frequently asked questions general information um, so do by all means have a look at that and if you've got any questions obviously just email me or leave a comment and i will get back to you i love these bunnies they are so cute um anyway thank you very much indeed for joining me and i look forward to seeing you again soon bye